Today is different from any other day. Our story is both sad and interesting. We will learn a tough lesson about what people are capable of. This story is true and happened in our world. Let's not wait any longer and start with the events. John and Sandra were a really great couple and they were excited to be together forever. When they found out they were having triplets, they knew their lives were going to be different, but in a good way. But then something happened that made John more upset than he had ever been, and he left Sandra and the kids. He didn't see them for a long time and until one day, when something happened that absolutely shocked him. John started to feel really unsure about his family. He noticed that the kids didn't look like him at all. When he talked to his wife about it, she said it wasn't true. So John decided to take charge and do a special test called DNA to find out the truth. When he finds out the truth, everything feels very sad and confusing for him. The test shows that he is not the real dad of the triplets. Even though his wife says she didn't cheat, he decides to leave her. He still cares about her, but he can't be with someone who isn't honest with him. For many years, he doesn't hear from Sandra or her kids, but he always remembers the triplets. Their time together was short, but it was really special and he will always keep that memory in his heart. One day he sees them again and something happens that completely changes everything. What did John find out when he saw the triplets again? John and Sandra were married for a little while when they found out that she was going to have a baby. They were so, so happy when they heard the news. They talked about having kids before, but they didn't plan to be parents just yet, so they were extra excited. The baby was going to change their life, but in a different way than they expected. Their love for each other grew even more during the pregnancy. They became even closer, learning new things about themselves and each other. They took really good care of one another. They both loved their life together and were excited to make their family even bigger. When they found out they were going to have three babies at once, they were super surprised. They hadn't even planned for one baby yet, and now they were going to have three. They were a little worried because they never raised a baby before, but soon they stopped worrying and felt happy instead. When they saw the baby's faces on the screen during the first checkup, they instantly loved them. They promised to give them a happy home no matter what. But little did they know something big was about to happen that would make their lives very different. As the mom's belly got bigger, they made a special room in their house for the babies. They had so much fun choosing furniture and getting clothes and toys. It was supposed to be a happy time, but something bad happened that they didn't expect. The nine months passed before they even realized it. One day, Sanders' water broke and John quickly drove her to the hospital. That same day, three beautiful babies were born. They were all perfectly healthy and Sanders' recovery was also going well. Everything seemed to be perfect, but that was about to change. The new parents were adjusting to their new life with three babies at home. They were doing a good job, and they quickly got used to their new lifestyle. Both John and Sandra loved their children with all their heart, but then John started to notice something that he couldn't ignore. The babies looked nothing like him. He tried to convince himself that they were still too young. And once they grew a little bit bigger and their facial features developed further, he would be able to see the resemblance. But to his disappointment, that just didn't happen. He wasn't sure of what to do. He did not want to do anything serious before he was absolutely sure that his doubts were correct. He decided to talk to Sandra about it first. Yes, she was emotional and tired, and it was not going to be a fun conversation, but he just needed to ask her first. It was the right thing to do. One evening, once they had put the babies to bed, John sat down next to Sandra and asked her if they could talk. He explained what had been on his mind and once he was done talking, they sat there in complete silence for a few seconds. He had no idea how she was going to react. But once she finally looked at him, it was clear. She was furious. She asked John if he was serious and when he said that he was, she completely exploded with anger. She could not believe that he actually doubted her. What was he even thinking? She stormed into the bedroom and locked the door behind her. John was left alone in the living room. And even though he felt bad for hurting his wife, he realized that she had never actually denied what he had said. Why hadn't she answered his question? It was obvious that she was upset, but she could have more reasons for that. Even after he asked, she had never explicitly told him that the babies were his as much as they were hers, and this only raised more questions in John's mind. He knew that he needed to do something, even though his wife would not be of much help. He thought about it for a while, and he decided that the best thing he could do was a Deanna test. This would definitely give him a clear answer to his questions, so he made an appointment with his doctor and explained the situation. He knew that he had to be careful, because if Sandra knew what he was doing, she would only become angrier. John waited until Sandra went to take a shower, and then he secretly collected everything the doctor would need in order to do the test. He used cheek swabs to collect each of the baby's DNA, and he used the fourth one for himself. He was now one step closer to finding the truth. The next day, he delivered all the DNA samples to the lab. The only thing he could do now was wait for the doctor to call him back with the results, and John hated waiting. He still had no idea what to expect, but he hoped they would be a match. Days passed and he barely spoke to his wife. They only talked when they had to discuss something about their children like feeding them or changing their diapers. John felt that something had changed in their relationship since he had asked her that question and he was almost starting to regret it. 
these days were the most difficult for him. Every time he looked at his kids, he couldn't help but think of the test and what would happen if his suspicions were confirmed. He loved them with all of his heart, and it pained him to think about the possibility that he was, in fact, not their father. One day, John's phone finally rang. It was the doctor. He quickly locked himself in the bathroom and held his breath as he answered the phone. He was so curious about what the doctor had to say, he could not wait to hear it. These next moments were going to determine the rest of his life. Hi, John, it's Dr. Roberts. Do you have a minute? The doctor asked him. John's heart was beating in his chest and his hands were shaking as he listened to the voice that was coming through the phone. And then the doctor finally told him what the test results had shown him. The test showed that John was not the father. He was not related to the babies in any way. Upon hearing this, his world collapsed. All this time he had hoped that his suspicions were wrong and that he was just imagining things. But now, he found out the truth. There was nothing he could do about it anymore. He was heartbroken. How could Sandra have done this to him? He thought she loved him. Their relationship had always been perfect, they never fought, and they completely trusted each other. But maybe that had been his mistake. About a year ago, he had noticed that she had become very close with one of her colleagues. Would he have anything to do with this? John decided that he needed to confront Sandra about it. He hoped that she would be honest with him now and give him the answers that he asked for. Now that he had real proof, she would have to admit what she had done behind his back, right? Dumb. However, Sandra kept denying everything. She told him that she would never be unfaithful and that she would never do something like that to their family. John tried to get her to admit it several times, but she stuck with her answer. And to John, it was clear. Sandra could lie, but the DNA test couldn't. A few months later, the divorce was finalized. John had left Sandra and the triplets, and even though it hurt him, he thought he had made the right decision. He still loved the triplets and he would do so until the day he died, but he was not ready to raise a family with the woman he loved after she had betrayed him in such a way. To John, the worst thing was that Sandra never admitted what she had done. She kept denying everything until the end, and she had begged John to stay. But he refused. If she had been honest with him and willing to talk about it, he might have stayed, even if he wasn't the father. But sadly, that never happened. So, they continued their lives without each other. John moved into an apartment in the city, and Sandra stayed in the house with her children. Years passed, and they never heard from each other again, until one day. And it went a lot different than they had expected. It was only years later that John would see the triplets again, and their meeting would lead to a startling discovery. But until then, he thought of them all the time. Not a day went by that he didn't look at their pictures or think of some special moments he shared with them. Sure, he only knew them as babies, but he still had formed a connection with them. And he would never forgive Sandra for betraying him like that, forming such a beautiful family with him, and then taking it all away again. All of this kept going through his head, and it had a big impact on him. The more time passed, the worst John felt. Sandra had begged him to come back and deep inside he knew he would have done just that if she ever admitted what she did and told him the truth. But she kept insisting that she had never cheated on him and since he did not want to hear those lies anymore, he decided to cut all contact with her. It only brought him more pain because he hadn't just lost his kids but also the love of his life. John started falling into some bad habits and he started drinking a lot more than he should. It even got to a point where he could no longer sit at home but he wanted to take revenge. The whole time he was home, drunk and lonely, he thought about everything that had happened and he formed theories in his head. He thought the most plausible theory was still that Sandra had cheated on him with that co-worker Michael and over time he convinced himself of it. So of course he did what anybody else would do in this situation or at least that's what he thought and went to Sandra's workplace. He was going to confront that co-worker. Hopefully he would be man enough to tell him the truth. Somebody had to do it. He barged into the building completely ignoring the receptionist when she told him sir, you cannot just walk in there, and he made his way to his way to the elevator. He looked up Michael's office on the floor plan and pressed the button to the third floor. All this time, his heart was racing. He was alone in the elevator, and he was breathing heavily. With every second that passed, the rage inside him only grew bigger. It seemed to take forever, but then the elevator finally stood still and the doors slid open. He had arrived at the third floor. He made his way to Michael's office and stormed through the door. Before Michael could even see what was happening, John had already grabbed him a by his shirt. What have you done to my family, Ha! Huh? How dare you, he said angrily. He let go of him, closed the door and lowered the blinds so nobody could see them. How can they both lie to me like this? Well, what are you talking about? It's John, right? I didn't do anything, man, Michael defended himself. John, of course, didn't believe any of this. With every word that came out of that man's mouth, he only got angrier, he thought. He balled his hand into a fist and held it up high, getting ready to swing it into Michael's face. But then, right as he was about to do it, the office door suddenly swung open, catching them both off guard as someone yelled, what the hell is going on here? John froze and softened his grip, and Michael saw this as a good chance to escape. When John turned around to see what interrupted him, 
he laid his eyes on someone he had not expected to see in a long time. It was his ex-wife, Sandra. Of course, she still worked in this building. John was blinded by anger and he wasn't thinking clearly, so it hadn't even occurred to him that he could run into her here. He just stood there and stared at her, not saying a word. She entered the room and closed the door behind her. He hadn't seen her in years, but she still looked the same as she did on the day he fell in love with her. As much as he tried to stop it, his eyes slowly filled with tears as he looked at the woman he loved so much, but had lost a long time ago. John, what are you doing here? She asked him. He was so drunk that he couldn't really form a good answer, so he just muttered something about needing to speak to Michael. You're drunk. You need to leave here. John, they could call the police on you. Do you understand? John realized that he had made a mistake, and he quickly walked away. He held his head down to hide the shame and tears, and as soon as he got home, he downed another bottle. This was the most embarrassing thing he had ever done, and what did he gain from it? Absolutely nothing. He realized that he really needed to change things. If he ever wanted to be a father in the future, he needed to do better. He knew it was going to be a difficult road to recovery, but he would not have to do it alone, and he would receive support from people he never expected to talk to. John planned on going to an Alcoholics Anonymous meeting, but before he was even able to do that, someone unexpectedly showed up on his doorstep. He heard a couple of knocks on his door, but he wasn't expecting anybody. He had no idea who it could be. When he opened the door, he saw that it was Sandra. She looked horrible like she had been crying a lot. John was a bit embarrassed about the mess in his apartment, but he invited her in anyway. He would not just slam the door in her face like that, and he was very surprised to see her. He never expected that she even wanted to see him again after he showed up in her office like that, especially since they hadn't spoken in a long time already. If she just showed up on his doorstep like that, it had to be really important, he thought. She came inside and took place on a chair at the kitchen table. She looked at him and the tears were streaming down her face. John, I don't know where to begin, she whispered and she held her head in her hands. He sat down next to her and took her hand in his, trying to calm her down. He gave her a glass of water, and she took a few deep breaths before she started to speak. I know we haven't spoken in a long time and I'm sorry for just showing up and announced, but I really need to tell you something. I still can't believe it myself. John just nodded, waiting silently for her to continue. He was really curious about what she had come to tell him. Would it be about Michael? Was her job going to sue him after all? No, that couldn't be it. She wouldn't be crying so much about something like that, right? It was his own fault. If anything, he deserved it. But to his surprise, Sandra continued her story and she did not mention Michael or her work even one single time. However, she did mention something else that really made his heart race. It appeared that she had come to talk to him about the triplets. He still cared about them, even though he wasn't their father. Was everything all right with them? Or did something happen? Were they sick? Did they need money for something? He chuckled at that last thought. If that was the case, he wouldn't be able to help them anyway. But his serious face came back again soon. He knew that whatever it was, it had to be important. Sandra finally told him the real reason she was there, and Michael turned pale. He did not say or do anything, he just froze and stared into the distance. He repeated the words she just said inside his head, until they lost all meaning. This couldn't be real. Finally, he was able to speak. You're kidding me, right? This had to be some kind of horrible joke, but Sandra looked at him and she shook her head. I'm serious. I'm really sorry, John. I have no idea how this could have happened either, but it's true. John realized that she was speaking the truth and he didn't know how to feel. He didn't know whether he wanted to laugh or cry, so he did both. He didn't know whether he wanted to be happy or angry with Sandra, but he just hugged her. This cannot have been easy for her either. Where do we need to go now, he asked her, and she told him that someone was waiting for them at the police station. They got in her car as fast as they could, and she drove them to the station. When they got there, Sandra walked over to the receptionist and asked for Detective Cooper. Mr. Cooper, thank you so much for meeting with me again. This is John, my ex-husband. The two men greeted each other, and the three of them sat down at Mr. Cooper's desk. He took a binder from a drawer and placed it on the table. Here they are. As Sandra opened the folder and peeked inside, she told John, I haven't seen these yet. I wanted to do it together with you, he nodded, and she took something out of the folder. As she placed it on the table, he realized that it was a pile of pictures. They looked through the pile, and at first, John did not know what he was looking at. All the pictures were of people who didn't seem to be aware of the fact that they were being photographed. Why was she showing this to him? Who were these people? And why was this so important to her? But as they looked through more of the pictures, John saw it, and once he had seen it, he could never unsee it. He gasped and held his hand in front of his mouth. What, how are they? He wanted to ask so many questions, but he could finish none of them. Sandra just took his hand and nodded, and John burst out crying in. What are we going to do now? We cannot just walk up to them and tell them what happened, right? He asked. And Sandra replied, well, I don't know. That's why I brought you here. Once I found out the truth, I contacted Mr. Cooper and asked him to track them down. I wanted to see how they were doing before I did anything that I could never take back. I thought it would be easier once I saw the pictures, but I still don't know what to do. 
She finally looked up at him with tears in her eyes and said, At least now you know I've always been honest with you. And John suddenly felt so sorry for her. He just now realized what kind of horrible time she must have been through, and he felt extremely guilty. But he would deal with that later. You see, Sandra had made a shocking discovery. After John took the DNA test, and it showed negative results, she insisted that he do another test. And he did, and it showed negative. John was furious and he left her, but she didn't understand what was going on. She realized that there must have been a mistake in the lab or the test had been carried out incorrectly. But their relationship had been in shambles anyway, and John didn't believe her anyway, so she decided to let it go. Until years later, she started having doubts. As the years passed, Sandra started noticing something about the triplets. They indeed looked nothing like John. But they looked nothing like her either. And once she realized this, she just could not let it go. She was determined to find out what was going on, so she did another DNA test, but this time with her own DNA. And when Sandra saw those test results, she finally realized what had happened. She called in Mr. Cooper's help, just to be sure of it, and the moment when she saw the pictures he had shown her and John, she realized that this was not just a crazy dream or a nightmare. It was true that she had never cheated on John and it was also true that he wasn't the triplet's father. As a matter of fact, she wasn't their mother either. There was only one explanation for all this and thanks to Mr. Cooper, she found out the truth. The triplets had been switched with other triplets in the hospital as babies just after they were born. She was heartbroken when she found out and she knew she needed to tell John immediately. And they had to make a difficult decision. Would they tell their own kids about this or not? They deserved to know. But how much good would this do them? In an attempt to make this decision easier, Sandra had asked Mr. Cooper to find her triplets. She wanted to know how what they looked like and how they were doing. These triplets looked like exact copies of both Sandra and John. It was kind of funny to see, but they all seemed perfectly happy and healthy and completely unaware of the fact that they had never met their parents. So would they have to drop that bomb in their lives or let them live in peace? Sandra and John decided to take some time to think about this. Now that they knew what had really happened, they had plenty of things to talk about. Over time, they would fix their relationship and make a decision that they both agreed on, telling the triplets the truth or keeping them safe from it. The most important thing was that they at least had each other again and they would get through this together.